Welcome back to the IB Investor Channel. I would like to express my thanks again for all the attention and positive feedback that are received on both Twitter and here on YouTube. It makes me very happy and it just pushes me to keep going. Now, in this video, this is a user request from Twitter. So I didn't know much about this company. This company is called OEM International AB. So it will be kind of interesting to see what kind of numbers that uh, management here has been able to uh, produce for this company. So we'll cover a short introduction of the company, the share price development, the sales and profitability, the cash flows, the debt situation, the return on invested capital and return on equity, and the dividend yield in history, and some of the CEO remarks. Now, this company is a trading company, so they purchase things from manufacturers of, of goods, cables, and so on. And then they offer some kind of solution you know, to their customers that could be tailor-made. As you can see here, they have some sort of own assembly line here where they can do a lot of cables and stuff like that to integrate with all of these consoles here. But they can also sell you know, full bulk stuff. I, I saw some pictures here where they sold you know, some, some Loctite and so on. So I think they're doing a little bit of both, that both they're selling you know, products which are finished and just, you know, ship them to their customers and just be, you know, a middleman, so to speak. But uh, it seems that they want to, to specialize in, in the add-on thing as well, which is basically adding some cables, adding some chips, you know, and so on. So, and, and this is just how it looks like here as an assembly um, line at their, one of their facilities. And the company was founded in 1974 in Sweden. It currently has a market cap of 9.9 .9 billion Swedish kroners. The market it trades at is currently mid cap here in Sweden under the ticker symbol OEM. And the B shares are the ones listed here as far as I'm aware. The industry is industrial components, but they are also a, a trader as we saw here. So not necessarily producing everything by themselves, but also purchasing in bulk and selling it uh, or reselling it to, to their customers in turn. Uh, the company is currently uh, owner operated by Orvius and also Siv Francian here. So we can see here the, the shares uh, that they hold right now. So Orvius about 15.4% of the capital and 28% of the votes. And Siv Francien here, almost 11% of the capital and 21% of the votes right now. And here you can also see some of the products that they're producing or, or reselling here. Now for the share price development here, we can see that the stock has done very well for itself. And we can see here it's been listed for quite some period here for many years from 1984 at least. We have some history here and we can see that the stock has done very, very well here. So... You know, for the maximum period here, we can see that it almost returned 14,000% here. We can also see that it's not that many shareholders currently at my stock broker here, Avanza, only 4,600. So quite a few amount of shareholders right now. We can also see here the total return here on the right side because it's not included in those numbers. So the total return here, just as a reminder, means that you have received dividends and reinvested the dividends back into the stock. So for the one year period, it's almost been 30%, which is very good. For the three year period here, 62%, five year, 134%. And for the 10 year period here, 560% almost here with dividends invested. So quite the strong performer, I would say, when the stock, and we can also see that it has traded much higher here at 109 kroners, and it's currently traded down roughly you know, 34% or so from, from the old time highs here. So a better value proposition, but we'll look at numbers later on to see if it's really true or not. Now for the income statement of this company, and we will monitor here the blue line first, first which is net sales here. So, you know, they only had one slip here where that I can see here where um, the net sales actually went down for the period here. So just a couple of millions, probably because of the COVID-19 years here, we can see that uh, it was in 2020. But other than that, it looked pretty nice here. So currently a 5.1 billion net sales here in the most recent quarter, which is nice. We can also see here, and, and this is for the trailing 12 months, I might add. Uh, and we can see the EPS growth here 
growing very, very nicely here, actually growing here even in 2020, despite of that of COVID-19. So nothing to add here other than, you know, we just see that it has perhaps slowed down a little bit here as of late here in the most recent quarter. And uh, looking at the gross margin here, we can see that it currently sits at 36%, so not the highest for an industry company, but uh, we have to remember that they're probably not manufacturing everything themselves. So, you know, they're pressured here by being the middleman. But we can see, however, that the profit margin here sits at a very strong 12.1%, which is actually quite good for this type of company. But we can see here in the past that it's traded at roughly, or not traded, but they have had a much less uh, profit margin here, you know, reaching 7 or 8% here back in the days, but uh, now currently at 12.1% again, which is very strong. Going back, uh, because I missed it here, so the gross margin here going back, unfortunately you can't see it, but they did top here at uh, roughly 37.1% here at 2016. So they did perform a little bit higher here, but you know it's very close to the current 36% here in the most recent quarter. But overall, this picture paints a you know uh, pretty nice view here on on the income statement for this company. The thing that often worries me when you have numbers such as the previous picture here, where you know net sales and EPS and everything went upwards, that is if the company has had some dilution here that they you know issued a lot of shares over the time, but <clears throat> as it looks with this company, sorry, uh, this company has not added any shares at all. So there's been absolutely zero dilution in terms of millions here. So we can see that they had 139 million shares in 2014. And in the most recent quarter here for the trailing 12 months, they also had 139 million shares. So absolutely no dilution here in terms of millions of shares, which is very good to see. Now for the free cash flow, we'll start with the left hand side here. So we can see the margin here. So they currently have a margin at 10.3%, which is actually pretty strong for an industry company. And uh, we can see, however, that they have been at higher levels here, 13.3% in the past. But you know, if we would just look at the average, it would be somewhere you know closer to perhaps 6% over time. So that number is probably the one to you know kind of expect going forwards. But we have seen here in 2022 where the numbers dropped quite massively here by you know 70 percent here or so from 2021 levels down to 2022 levels but now again it picked up here at roughly 416 percent or above for the free cash flow margin here so quite the strong development and we can just see some peers here ad tech at 7.1 percent and into trade here at 1.6 percent so you know, pretty similar numbers. Indutrade is pretty weak here, I would say though, but just some peers to peers comparison here. And then the per, uh, per share value here, we can see that it currently sits at a um, 3.8 number here. So it kind of correlates pretty strongly here with the uh, margin. The exception here will be in 2020 where the uh, margin was actually quite high, but it was lower in, in terms of kroners here. But, you know, we have to remember that this company is also growing. So that's why it's it is going to be a lower amount here. But other than that, it looks pretty nice. The development over time in terms of per share numbers as well. Now for the cash flow overview, and we can see that the cash flows from operations here in blue did grow pretty nicely here up until 2020. Uh, and then we saw some decline here or pretty big declines here actually, you know, almost half here uh, or not almost, but, you know, 40% or so down perhaps, but uh, quite a big steep here in decline in 2022. And then we can see a recuperation here in most recent quarter here at 600 million and also posting a all time high number here for the 10 year uh, period here, which is very, very good to see. We can also see the investing or capex part of the business here, which is actually quite low. So it's not massive amounts of numbers here. So you, you see like the biggest one here would be 153 million. And there has been some, some 89 million and some 76 million here, 79 million here in the past, but nothing really that sticks out. So I would assume that maybe this company isn't, you know, doing a lot of acquisitions perhaps per se. So not super active in the market, or perhaps they're just doing some smaller acquisitions or something like this, or, but it looks like they're not investing 
that much of the business compared to the you know the cash from operations so you can see here that this company is actually producing quite a high free cash flow as a consequence here and we can see they have done so for for many years it's almost like everything that they have from cash from operations is, is translated into free cash flow here almost with some odd years here in, in 2022 but this looks pretty nice as an overview i would say for a company like this now looking at the uh, net debt versus the uh, cash from operations here and and it looks again very nice here nothing really that uh, you know looks very alarming so in the blue line here we can see that they um, they do have some net debt here so as long as it's positive they have some net debt but they did have some negative years here in 2020 and 2021 where they had more cash and we can see here how the cash from operations you know it covers the debt more than well so this company, as it looks like right now, you know, they could go out in the market and make some acquisition or do a lot of investing uh, in the coming uh, quarters here without uh, the numbers actually looking too bad. But, you know, even though you post a very nice cash from operations, this number could always go down in the coming coming quarters, depending on how their you know sales development looks like. So it's going to be quite interesting also to read some of the uh, CEO remark here going forwards. Continuing here with some more debt, uh, and here we can see the net debt to EBITDA, and the company currently has a 0.11 times uh, multiple here, so quite the low multiple and nothing right now to be worried about. Uh, and I would say, historically speaking, it's been pretty low for the majority of the years here. So I would say that management has been pretty conservative in terms of using debt, as we saw in the previous picture. So, you know, this looks like a pretty stable company. I mean, it's not negative as it's been here in, in the most recent quarter, at least. But, you know, you can't expect a company to be at negative net debt to EBITDA all the time. But they have been in the past, at least here for two years in, in quite some recent time here. But uh, again, nothing alarming here. Now for the enterprise value to uh, EBIT, and we can see here that the company currently trades at a 13.2 multiple here, which is not, it's not crazy levels. And uh, we can see here also in a sense that it is kind of in line with how it looked like in the past, but uh, it has been, there has been periods as we can see here where the company did trade at much higher multiples here and this is you know much similar to the serial acquirers such as i think indotrade and adtech but uh, right now this is of course a much better value proposition comparing it to even its historical level so it's the lowest it's ever been but we have to consider as well how the numbers look like if the numbers are in decline then you know the market could be worried here because we did see a a decline here in share price as well in 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 some recent time here so the market you know is a little bit worried about this company and it's you know possible earnings capacity here going forward so i would say when numbers looks like this comparing it to the historical levels you know it's not pricing in too much but uh, there is some worry here in in these numbers right now now for management's uh, allocations performance here and we can see the return on invested capital here on the left side so actually quite high numbers here I didn't expect these numbers to be this high when I, when, when I looked at this company the first time, but seeing that the company has produced a double digit, you know, more than 30% here in the most recent time here, which is very impressive, I would say. So management has done a excellent job here to, you know, produce very good future earnings here. And we can see the same side here in the return on equity also for a long period here, you know, th this is 10 years but we can see that they have posted a double digit, you know, return on equity as well. And, you know, in the most recent time here, also in, in the thirties, uh, and also here actually on the upper levels here on, on the thirties here. So quite strong performance here for management. They've done a lot of good investments here, you know, for their future business here and, and received a lot of good allocation from this. So I think that management has done a good job here looking at these numbers. Now for the dividend of this company, and we can see here per share on the right side, we'll actually start here on this side. So we can see that they did have a nice development here in terms of growth. Unfortunately, they stopped the dividend here for the 2019 fiscal year, which is paid out in 2020. So not so good for guys just looking for a safe dividend here, but uh, 
they did reset the dividend here again in uh, 2020 fiscal year paid out in 2021 and they also offered here a uh, redemption share or aktie in lösen for the swedish listeners here so some special dividend situation here so that's why this um, bar looks much higher than than the rest because they had a special situation here where they added some extra dividend here and we can also see here on the left side where we have the dividend yield here so I got a little bit interested why the dividend yield was so different so we can see here that it's probably just a mix of you know the share price going in decline a little bit here so it's currently offering a two percent yield here but uh, I also checked the payout ratio here so in 2014 they paid out 71.7 percent of the result here in this period so much higher that of today which is only 33.7 percent here for the fiscal year 2022 so you know the money that they paid out here for you know to offer this two percent yield they're paying much less of the payout ratio here so if they were to double it you know then they would have 66 percent payout ratio and that would offer a four percent yield so this number being four percent would be you know the highest that they ever been and that's only 66 percent whereas this was 71 percent i'm not saying that they are doing it but just playing around with numbers so this div dividend yield here two percent it's nothing alarming and we have to remember that the ev to ebit multiple i think it was at 13 times was the lowest that they ever traded at currently so it probably explains also why the dividend yield here is a little bit higher compared to that of you know the the previous year here and we have to remember that this year here was the special situation dividend here this year here and basically the the adding of some extra kroners here per share all right now for the ceo remark and and uh, my summary here for this part is yes yeah, sales were down and it's mostly because of fx here so the currency situation here is a big headwind for this company currently so they have reported here some negative um, sales figures because of this if it weren't for the fx it probably would have increased here by roughly two percent or so so some headwinds here for the company especially in terms of fx here and also the market situation third quarter here saw a drop off in growth momentum for oem so they're seeing some slowdown here in market here and it has been subdued here but by the instability and unrest of the world economy currently facing so looks like they have some some issues not just with you know uh, with the fx but also lower demands here as we can see the market di dynamics have changed as a result and uh, they think uh, that it's going to be the same here for a further downturn in the next year so quite worrisome here that they're already mentioning 2024 as a possible downturn here but he says also that or the management here says also that they don't know exactly how it's going to look like uh, oem's organization is fueled by creativity and innovative spirits and so on blah blah so you know uh, a lot of headwinds here in this quarter i would say and with most companies at this size they don't often give any forecast exactly on numbers if it's going to be 50 percent less if it's going to be 10 percent less if sales are going to be five percent less if the eps is going to be within an, an interval or something like this so it is quite difficult for investors you know to to give any estimates here or base any estimates based on you know what they're saying because they're not giving actual numbers so you have to crank them yourselves and that can cause a lot of worry in the market so i think it's good at least that you know he's he's calling some some uh some headwinds here but it's not helping us as investors a lot you know to tell where this company is going but some strong headwinds here would be the summary and i think it can be good for investors to bear this in mind even though the ev2 ebit multiple for example looked like it was the lowest ever but we then have to remember as well that you know sales are probably going to be negative here for the next quarter or next quarters in plural here so it could be the case that that will also affect you know eps and so on and then this company could look a little bit more uh, not overvalued per se but the value proposition could look worse actually than the current reported numbers here if we go forwards a couple of quarters here so that's the only summary that i would you know bring with me at least
now for some closing remark here from myself and you know a uh, big shout out to um, the guys mentioning this uh, company on Twitter I do appreciate that and I think that uh, you know looking at numbers here at least the historical numbers really intrigue me here the company has been on my radar in the past but only so in terms of seeing the ticker you know trading on on my brokers platform I've never previously looked at the company's numbers but only just you know seeing it in some screening processes or you know just by by chance that you know the company has some days traded at the winners list or losers list so to speak so I do thank you for this mention I thought this video was quite interesting to uh, to make just in terms of numbers here however uh, the EBIT to EBIT multiple looked pretty tempting as it was you know when we looked at those but uh, we have to remember here in the CEO remark as well that uh, there are probably going to be some headwinds here in terms of you know uh, decline in organic sales growth here for a couple of quarters it looks like uh, so that's the only negative about this company right now that uh, that could put a wet blanket on on the share uh, for a couple of months worst case or even put some more pressure on on the stock going down so that will be those bits that would scare me right now at least but uh, super intrigued at least by the historical number and seeing the depth situation of this company they're probably going to fare quite well uh, even during stress here because the low net depth to EBITDA multiple here is you know it's nothing alarming but anyways thank you very much for watching this video if you liked the video please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.